Book four, part one of Ovid's Metamorphoses. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Metamorphoses by Publius Ovidius Naso. Translated by Brooks Moore. Book four, part one. Alcitoe daughter of king minius consents not to the orgies of the god denies that bacchus is the son of jove and her two sisters join her in that crime twas festal day when matrons and their mates keeping it sacred had forbade all toil and having draped their bosoms with wild skins they loosed their long hair for the sacred wreaths and took the leafy thyrsus in their hands for so the priest commanded them austere the wrath of bacchus if his power be scorned mothers and youthful brides obeyed the priest and putting by their wickers and their webs dropped their unfinished toils to offer up frankincense to the god invoking him with many names o bacchus o twice born o fire begot thou only child twice mothered god of all those who plant the luscious grape o liber all these names and many more for ages known throughout the lands of greece thy youth is not consumed by wasting time and lo thou art an ever youthful boy most beautiful of all the gods of heaven smooth as a virgin when thy horns are hid the distant east to tawny india's clime where rolls remotest ganges to the sea was conquered by thy might o most revered thou didst destroy the doubting pentheus and hurl the sailor's bodies in the deep and smote lycurgus wielder of the axe and thou didst guide thy lynxes double yoked with showy harness satyrs follow thee and bacchanals and old silenus drunk unsteady on his staff jolting so rough on his small backbent as and all the way resounds a youthful clamour and the screams of women and the noise of tambourines and the hollow cymbals and the boxwood flutes fitted with measured holes thou art implored by all ismanian women to appear peaceful and mild and they perform thy rites only the daughters of king minius are carding wool within their fastened doors or twisting with their thumbs the fleecy yarn or working at the web so they corrupt the sacred festival with needless toil keeping their handmaids busy at the work and one of them while drawing out the thread with nimble thumb anon began to speak while others loiter and frequent these rites fantastic we the wards of palace much to be preferred by speaking novel thoughts may lighten labour let us each in turn relate to an attentive audience a novel tale and so the hours may glide it pleased her sisters and they ordered her to tell the story that she loved the most so as she counted in her well-stored mind the many tales she knew first doubted she whether to tell the tale of dercito that babylonian who ever the tribes of palestine in limpid ponds yet lives her body changed and scales upon her limbs or how her daughter having taken wings passed her declining years in whitened towers or should she tell of nice who with herbs too potent into fishes had transformed the bodies of her lovers till she met herself the same sad fate or of that tree which sometime bore white fruit but now is changed and darkened by the blood that stained its roots pleased with the novelty of this at once she tells the tale of pyramus and thisbe and swiftly as she told it unto them the fleecy wool was twisted into threads when pyramus and thisbe who were known the one most handsome of all youthful men the other loveliest of all eastern girls lived in adjoining houses near the walls that queen semiramis had built of brick around her famous city they grew fond and loved each other meeting often there and as the days went by their love increased they wished to join in marriage but that joy their fathers had forbidden them to hope 
and yet the passion that with equal strength inflamed their minds no parents could forbid no relatives had guessed their secret love for all their converse was by nods and signs and as a smouldering fire may gather heat the more it is smothered so their love increased now it so happened a partition built between their houses many years ago was made defective with a little chink a small defect observed by none although for ages there but what is hid from love our lovers found the secret opening and used its passage to convey the sounds of gentle murmured words whose tuneful note passed oft in safety through that hidden way there many a time they stood on either side this bee on one and pyramus the other and when their warm breath touched from lip to lip their sighs were such as this thou envious wall why art thou standing in the way of those who die for love what harm could happen thee shouldst thou permit us to enjoy our love but if we ask too much let us persuade that thou wilt open while we kiss but once for we are not ungrateful unto thee we own our debt here thou hast left a way that breathed words may enter loving ears so vainly whispered they and when the night began to darken they exchanged farewells made presents that they kissed a fond farewell vain kisses that to love might none avail when dawn removed the glimmering lamps of night and the bright sun had dried the dewy grass again they met where they had told their love and now complaining of their hapless fate in murmurs gentle they at last resolved a way to slip upon the quiet night elude their parents and as soon as free quit the great builded city and their homes fearful to wander in the pathless fields they chose a trysting place the tomb of ninus where safely they might hide unseen beneath the shadow of a tall mulberry tree covered with snow-white fruit close by a spring all is arranged according to their hopes and now the daylight seeming slowly moved sinks in the deep waves and the tardy night arises from the spot where day declines quickly the clever thisbe having first deceived her parents opened the closed door she flitted in the silent night away and having veiled her face reached the great tomb and sat beneath the tree love made her bold there as she waited a great lioness approached the nearby spring to quench her thirst her frothing jaws incarnadined with blood of slaughtered oxen as the moon was bright thisbe could see her and affrighted fled with trembling footstep to a gloomy cave and as she ran she slipped and dropped her veil which fluttered to the ground she did not dare to save it wherefore when the savage beast had taken a great draught and slaked her thirst and thence had turned to seek her forest lair she found it in her way and full of rage tore it and stained it with her bloody jaws but this bee fortunate escaped unseen now pyramus had not gone out so soon as this bee to the tryst and when he saw the certain traces of that savage beast imprinted in the yielding dust his face went white with fear but when he found the veil covered with blood he cried alas one night has caused the ruin of two lovers thou wert most deserving of completed days but as for me my heart is guilty i destroyed thee o oh, my love i bade thee come out in the dark night to a lonely haunt and failed to go before o oh, whatever lurks beneath this rock thou ravenous lion tear my guilty flesh and with most cruel jaws devour my cursed entrails what not so it is a craven's part to wish for death so he stopped briefly and took up the veil went straight away to the shadow of the tree and as his tears bedewed the well-known veil he kissed it oft and sighing said kisses and tears are thine receive my blood as well and he imbrued the steel girt at his side deep in his bowels and plucked it from the wound a faint with death as he fell back to earth 
his spurting blood shot upward in the air so when d k has riffed a leaden pipe a hissing jet of water spurts on high by that dark tide the berries on the tree assumed a deeper tint for as the roots soaked up the blood the pendant mulberries were dyed a purple tint this bee returned though trembling still with fright for now she thought her lover must await her at the tree and she should haste before he feared for her longing to tell him of her great escape she sadly looked for him with faithful eyes but when she saw the spot and the changed tree she doubted could they be the same for so the colour of the hanging fruit deceived while doubt dismayed her on the ground she saw the wounded body covered with its blood she started backward and her face grew pale and ashen and she shuddered like the sea which trembles when its face is lightly skimmed by the chill breezes and she paused a space but when she knew it was the one she loved she struck her tender breast and tore her hair then wreathing in her arms his loved form she bathed the wound with tears mingling her grief in his unquenched blood and as she kissed his death cold features wailed ah pyramus what cruel fate has taken thy life away pyramus pyramus awake awake it is thy dearest thisbe calls thee lift thy drooping head alas at thisbe's name he raised his eyes though languorous in death and darkness gathered round him as he gazed and then she saw her veil and near it lay his ivory sheath but not the trusty sword and once again she wailed thy own right hand and thy great passion have destroyed thee and i my hand shall be as bold as thine my love shall nerve me to the fatal deed thee i will follow to eternity though i be censured for the wretched cause so surely i shall share thy wretched fate alas whom death could me alone bereave thou shalt not from my love be reft by death and o ye wretched parents mine and his let our misfortunes and our pleadings melt your hearts that ye no more deny to those whom constant love and lasting death unite in tombs in a single sepulchre and o thou tree of many branching boughs spreading dark shadows on the corpse of one destined to cover twain take thou our fate upon thy head mourn our untimely deaths let thy fruit darken for a memory an emblem of our blood no more she said and having fixed the point below her breast she fell on the keen sword still warm with his red blood but though her death was out of nature's law her prayer was answered for it moved the gods and moved their parents now the gods have changed the ripened fruit which darkens on the branch and from the funeral pile their parents sealed their gathered ashes in a single urn so ended she at once lucanoe took the narrator's thread and as she spoke her sisters all were silent even the sun that rules the world was captive made of love my theme shall be a love song of the sun to set the lord of day whose wakeful eye beholds at once whatever may transpire witness the loves of mars and venus grieved to know the wrong he called the son of juno vulcan and gave full knowledge of the deed showing how mars and venus shamed his love as they defiled his bed vulcan amazed the nimble-thoughted vulcan lost his wits so that he dropped the work his right hand held but turning from all else at once he set to file out chains of brass delicate fine from which to fashion nets invisible filmy of mesh and airy as a thread of insect web that from the rafter swings implicit woven that they yielded soft the slightest movement or the gentlest touch with cunning skill he drew them round the bed where they were sure to dally presently appeared the faithless wife and on the couch lay down to languish with her paramour meshed in the chains they could not thence arise nor could they else but lie in strict embrace cunningly thus entrapped by vulcan's wit at once the lemnian cuckold opened wide the folding ivory doors and called the gods to witness there they lay disgraced and bound 
i wot where many of the lighter gods who wished themselves in like disgraceful bonds the gods were moved to laughter and the tale was long most noted in the courts of heaven end of book four part one